5 30 in the morning as you can see it's still dark outside and we're up just for this tutorial i already made this tutorial uh once before but uh, i saw that the quality was absolutely terrible so i figured let's redo this one and up the quality a little bit maybe slow it down a little bit as well so the first thing we have to do is we have to add some object as rigid bodies and this means we just have to tell blender which objects are going to be influenced by the physics simulation so for example we're going to select this floor plane over here and we're going to go down here to the physics property menu and we're going to click rigid body and now this object is a rigid body and it's affected by physics now this floor here we don't want it to go anywhere so we're going to set that to passive which means it's not going to be influenced by gravity it's not going to fall down it's just going to stay in place and it only serves as a floor so it's not going to collide with uh, so it's only going to collide with anything and it's not going to do anything else all right and we're going to take these wheels over here all right we're going to select all the wheels but not the sprockets we're just going to select the wheels and we're going to go up here to the object menu and we're going to go to the rigid body section and we're going to add active all right so now these objects are rigid bodies and now they're going to be influenced by gravity now these we're going to leave on active we're going to set the mass uh, to something like two kilograms now keep in mind when we're changing the mass of multiple objects at the same time we have to hold down the alt button before we make any changes so for example with all these selected we press two kilograms and then before we hit enter we're going to hold down alt and we're going to press alt and enter at the same time and now that applies uh, this uh, weight change to all the objects that we had selected all right and we're also going to well while we still haven't selected we have to set the collision shape for these objects to cylinder and once again, before you click on that, hold down Alt so it applies it to all the objects at the same time. All right. And now, when we play our animation over here, you will see that these wheels fall down to the ground, but they collide with the floor. That's it. All right. So this is pretty much. Uh, so these objects are now influenced by physics. Let's just stop right there. I have to remind you guys when you're using physics simulations, you have to save Blender and just make sure to quick save it all the time. Every single change you make, make sure you quick save it because Blender is going to crash all the time uh, with the physics simulation. And we also have to add some rigid bodies to the rest of our objects here, but we're going to do something different. Okay, we have to make some empty objects which are going to represent uh, these objects in the, in the physical world or in the physics simulation world. So, for example, we're going to add a cube here, and this cube is going to be uh, to represent our tank uh, body in the, uh, physic, in the physics simulation. So we're going to scale that down, make sure it's narrow enough to fit very well between the wheels with a nice gap between the, the cube and the wheels. Maybe we can make it so it has the same width uh, as the body of the tank. And we're just going to remodel it a little bit so it has roughly the same dimensions as the hull of the tank. All right, so we're going to lift this up. This is going to be the floor. This is going to be the roof of the hull. Roughly the same length, right? It doesn't matter too much, but something like this, this is not going to be visible anyway. And now in edit mode, we're going to select everything. We're going to go up here to the face menu. We're going to extrude individual faces, and this weird stuff is going to start happening. We can just right click that, then press X and delete faces, and then we're just left with this wireframe kind of cage over here. We can just merge those vertices by distance or remove the doubles or whatever. Okay, so now this is going to be the physics uh, simulation object. And the other stuff is going to be parented to it. So now we're going to select this cage, add another rigid body to it. And we're going to set the mass of that rigid body to something like 10 kilograms. All right, this one has to be a little bit heavier. We're going to leave that there and we're going to parent uh, the tank uh, to this rigid body. So we can parent the tank, hold the turret. Uh, this part over here, but not the wheels or the sprockets or anything like that. All right So when we move this cage around now the tank moves with it, but not the wheels or not the sprockets And now again if we play our animation, you can see the tank also falls to the ground There's some weird collision going on there, but let's not worry about that for now Now we're gonna do something similar with those as we did with this cage over here for the tank We're gonna do the same thing for the sprockets on the side here So let's focus on one of the sprockets. All right place our 3d cursor there and we're going to add in a cylinder and we're going to scale that cylinder down. We're going to rotate it so it has roughly the same uh, dimensions as a sprocket, uh, again, as we did with the uh, with this shape for the hull. And we're going to just adjust that a little bit. Again, we're going to take everything, go to the face menu in edit mode, uh, extrude individual faces, right click, and then delete the faces, and then just remove the doubles so we're left with this little cage kind of thing. Then we're going to duplicate it to the other sprocket, all right? So duplicate this cage to the other sprocket. Using the 3D cursor, we're going to place it over there. And then uh, we can just parent the sprockets to their uh, to their cage. Okay, let's just parent those, and there we go. And now we can just use these uh, cages as rigid bodies as well. We're going to select those two cylinders, all right? Again, we're going to add a rigid body, okay? Add active. And uh, again, we're going to hold down Alt as we do this. So hold down Alt, set the mass at 2, and hold down Alt, and set the collision shape to cylinder. And now if we play our animation, you will see that the sprockets also now fall to the ground because they have physics properties.
Next, uh, before we do anything else, let's also just delete the wheels on the other side because we're just gonna duplicate the rig from this side to the other side, all right? Next, we have to connect these wheels to the body of the tank, all right? So we're gonna select all the rigid bodies. Make sure you select the cage here and not the sprocket. We're gonna select all these wheels. With the wheel selected, we're going to select this cage we have over here. And then we're gonna go to the object menu. We're gonna go to rigid body and we're gonna click connect this time. And then we get this very, these very weird empty objects over here, but don't worry, we're about to uh, set those up in a second. We have this little menu down here once we connect them. And in this menu, we're gonna set the type to generic spring. We're gonna set the location to, uh, to selected. And we're gonna set the connection pattern to selected to active, all right? And now you can see that these empties, they kind of snap to the wheel that they're assigned to, all right? So we can select all these empties. Now, and we can set the pivot point individual origins and we're going to scale that down just a little bit so we have some more so there's a little bit more control but we can uh, they're not too large and not too too much in the way now with these empty objects selected we're going to go up here to this little uh, view layer menu and we're going to organize some of these objects a little bit into some collections just to make things a bit easier to save us some time later because we're going to have a whole lot of objects uh, with the individual tracks and everything so we're going to add a new collection we're going to name that let's say wheels and then we're going to add all of our wheel objects, all of our wheel objects into that uh, into that collection. All right. So all the circles and the cylinders we're going to add it to the wheels uh, collection. We're going to add a new collection. We're going to name that wheel constraints. All right. And then we're going to select all of our constraints for the wheel, for the wheels. We're going to move that in there. And now let's select all the objects inside our, our wheel constraints uh, collection. Okay. So we can just easily with two clicks select all of these. And we're going to go back to the physics properties. Now we're going to set up the suspension for these wheels. All right. So first we have to set some limits. For example, if we go to this limits menu and we open up the angular limits, we're going to limit the Y angle and the Z angle. So with all these selected, let's hold down alt. Then we're going to click on Y and Z angle. All right. And now we're going to select all these little menus and we're going to type in zero. And again, before you press enter, hold down alt to just all of them. And this is going to prevent rotation on the Y and the Z axes. All right. So we don't want this wheel rotating. Let me show you. We don't want this wheel rotating on the Z, uh, around the Z axis or around the Y axis. All right. We only want it to rotate on the X axis. Okay. So we just basically limited the movement on these two axes. So the maximum movement uh, on these two axes, which are Y and Z, the maximum rotation that we allow is zero, which means none at all. We can only rotate on the X axis. And then we're going to go down here to the linear limits. And we're also going to set some movement limits uh, for these wheels. All right. So we're going to limit them on the X axis and the Y axis. And this means that we don't allow the wheels in their place to move forwards or backwards or inwards and outwards. We only want them uh, to allow them to move up and down so that they have some sort of a suspension. All right. So we're going to select all those menus again. We have to make sure that we hold down alt again when we do this. We're going to select all these menus again. We're going to hit zero alt and set that to everything. So we don't allow any movements on those two axes. Now we're going to have to make things slightly different for the two sprockets. So we're going to select those two separately. And with those two selected, we're also going to limit the Z axis uh, linear movement. All right. So with those two selected, hold alt, press Z and set both of these to zero. All right. Because we don't want to allow the sprockets to balance up and down. There's no suspension on the sprockets. Those have to stay completely in place. They just have to rotate. And then once again, we're going to select all the wheels, but this time we're going to deselect the two sprockets because again, we have now we have to set up the suspension and the bounciness for these wheels to make them act as a spring. And we don't want that on the two sprockets. All right. So we just have the wheel selected now. And now we're going to go all the way down. Let's collapse all this stuff to get it out of the way. We're going to go all the way down to the springs menu and we're going to go to the linear section of that menu and we're going to click on Z axis. All right. Let's do that with the alt uh, button held down. And we're going to set the stiffness to something like 300. All right. And we're going to set the damping to 15. And you're going to see now that if we play our animation, that the tank kind of balances on these wheels as if they're springs, as if they have some suspension. And now we can also just test this out by copying the wheels to the other side really quick, just to see to make sure that everything works correctly. I've noticed at this point that my tank is kind of tipping forwards. So that's not supposed to happen. But the reason for that is because the origin of this object that we have here is set all the way to the front, which means the center of mass is basically at the front. So no wonder everything is leaning forwards. So if we go back to frame zero, we're going to select this whole frame. We're going to set the 3D cursor to the middle of this object. Then in object mode, we're just going to set the origin to the 3D cursor. All right. And now if we play our animation, you can see that everything is nicely balanced. And finally, we have to wrap some tracks around these wheels. All right. And we're just going to do this using the good old curve and array modifier technique first. So we're basically just going to add a curve. All right. We're going to add a curve. It's going to be a path curve. 
and we're going to place that at the bottom of these wheels that we have over here. And in the side view, we can make sure that it's just a little bit below the wheel. So there is enough space between the curve and the wheels. And we want to make sure that the, this is also the case as we extrude this all the way around the wheels. We want to make sure that there is enough space between the wheels and the sprockets. All right, because we don't want anything to collide uh, with, uh, with the wheels. And now when we get back to the end, we're just going to take the first and the last vertices and we're going to fill those in with F. And now we have a curve wrapped all the way around uh, our wheels. All right. And now we just want to double check to make sure that nothing is colliding with uh, the collision objects that we have here. So these circles that we have for our wheels that represent them in the physics world, we want to make sure that they don't collide with our curve. Now our curve is complete. We can also just quickly rename that curve. And now we're going to create our first track. All right, let's go to side view. Let's place our 3D cursor here and let's set the origin for this curve uh, so somewhere on the curve. And we're going to add a little plane. All right, we're going to scale that little plane down, 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 and even more down like this. And then we're going to extrude it to add some thickness and we're going to make sure that it has the same width as a wheel. So it's just, just a little bit wider than the wheel, as a matter of fact. And we're going to correct the normals on that and then we're going to add an array modifier to this object. All right, so we're going to set the X factor to zero and we're going to set the Y factor to something like 1.2. And we're going to increase the count on these uh, tracks Then we're going to add a curve modifier. And we're going to select our curve. And now, as you can see, these tracks are going to be snapped around this curve. And now, once again, we have to make sure that these objects uh, that we have for the tracks don't collide uh, with the wheels. So maybe we're going to have to expand this a little bit, move this outwards just a little bit to give it some extra space. Then we're just going to increase the count uh, on the array modifier to make sure everything connects back in place. And we might have to adjust this number just a little bit. So we're going to set this to something like 1.99 or 1.198 or something like that anyway. Now these tracks are going to rotate around uh, the curve and we can just apply the curve modifier and apply the array modifier. Now up here, we're going to add a new collection and we're going to name that tracks because we're about to get 150 million different objects when we separate these tracks into the different into separate objects. So we're going to move this object that we have for our tracks into the tracks collection. Now with these tracks selected, we're going to go to edit mode. We're going to select everything and we're going to press P. And we're going to separate it by loose parts. All right. And now we have a bunch of these different objects. So every single track is a separate object. So we're going to select all of those uh, inside the collection here. We're going to go to the object menu, we're going to set origin, and we're going to set the origin to geometry. So now the or origin of each of these little tracks is placed exactly in the middle of the track, then we have to add some rigid bodies. So again, object menu, rigid body, add active. And then in the physics, we're also going to have to adjust uh, some settings for these tracks. But we're just going to change the weight for now. So we're going to go to this mass over here, we're going to set that at something like 0.2. And again, we're going to hold down alt before we press enter. Now every track has a slightly lower weight. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect these tracks to each other. So with all the tracks selected, we're going to go again to the object menu, to the rigid body section, and we're going to click on connect. And now we're going to set the type uh, to hinge, we're going to set the location to center. And we're going to set the connection pattern to chain by distance. All right. And now you're going to see that all these uh, constraints or all these empty objects are going to be assigned to a track. But you are going to notice that we have a gap between two, two of the tracks because the con uh, constraint was not applied or the, the connection was not applied to the first and the last track that we had selected. So we have to just do that one more time. We're going to select those two tracks which are not connected. Again, rigid body connect and again, hinge center and chain by distance. And now you can see that we have a full circle here. We can select all those constraints, uh, pivot point, individual origins, we're going to scale that down all the way just so we have a, a less messy rig over here. And now this is very important. Okay, with all these constraints selected for the tracks, and the, and the pivot point set to individual origins, we have to rotate everything by 90 degrees on the y axis. And now our rig is almost complete. So let's move this tank upwards. And let's just duplicate all of this entire rig to the other side of the tank. All right, we're going to select the whole rig on one side. And then in front view, we're going to duplicate that to the other side of the tank. All right, maybe we can just kind of check to make sure that it aligns correctly with the other side of the tank, something like that. All right, and we're going to bring our tank back down. And we're going to make the floor a downhill slope one more time. Now before you play the animation to see this happening, make sure to save All right, make sure to quick save, it's very likely to crash at this point, because we have a lot of different objects, which are affected by physics. And we're also just going to make this little bump in the way for the tank to test the suspension. So we're going to play the animation. And as you can see, the tank is rolling down the hill. And you can see that the suspension works just fine as the tank goes over this little hill. And we are good to go. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, as always, just let me know in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next one.